Congressman Tanner, uh, you know, thanks for uh, that kind introduction and, and thanks for your leadership and the, uh, you and all your colleagues provide to the foundation. Uh, the ICCCF has been globally recognized uh, for many projects that benefit worldwide conservation and international papers please be part of this organization. Uh, I'd also like to recognize the ICCF president, uh, Dave Barron, for his continued leadership of the group. Thanks, Dave. And we certainly agree with the mission that you uh, said the ICCF was all about. That's truly what International Paper believes in. Uh, I don't want to turn this evening into last night's All-Star game. So uh, <laughs> we, could be on the, we could be on the way. That's not going to happen. So those at International Paper know I wouldn't let that happen. But it is a pleasure to be here tonight. And what I want to do in the next few minutes is just give you a very brief look at International Paper and share with you how we talk about global forestry and sustainability and how we think about it, more importantly, how we practice it on the ground. Uh, then I'd like to share a few thoughts with you about how we think we can work together to help sustain forest lands around the world. Uh, just very quickly to get started, uh, International Paper is a global company. We're in paper and packaging. Our primary markets are North America, Europe, Latin America, Russia, Asia, and North Africa. Uh, we also own a big uh, North American distribution business called Expedex. We currently have 80,000 employees uh, in international paper and our joint venture employees around the world. And we expect to add about 15,000 more employees when we complete the acquisition of one of our competitors' packaging businesses, uh, Warehouser, uh, next month. Uh, that will bring our total global sales to just under $30 billion. Our products range from corrugated boxes, which you use every day, to packaging for golf balls. I hope all of you use a lot of those. Uh, to printing for office papers, uh, specialty products, and I believe I've got an example of a product we're pretty proud of called the Ecotainer Cup, which I believe is being used in the house. So uh, it's the only fully compostable hot, cup, hot drink cup that's out in the marketplace. While we're the biggest user and uh, consumer of wood fiber uh, in the world, we don't own much land. It's interesting. Uh, in, 19, in 2006, we sold the bulk of our six million acres, really all in one day, uh, an area equal to the size of Vermont. However, we still manage about 260,000 acres in Brazil and har have harvesting rights on more than 11 million acres uh, in Russia. Uh, since this room is full of committed people to conservation partnerships, you know, one thing we're really proud of that I think many of you know about, but I'll just mention, is when we sold that six million acres of land, uh, we reached an historic agreement with the Nature Conservancy and the Conservation Fund, and that agreement protected nearly 300,000 acres of environmentally sensitive forest lands across 11 states, most of those states in the southeast. Uh, the sale at the time was the single largest conservation sale in the south, and we think it was one of the largest ever in the nation. Many of these lands are now permanently protected from future development. Uh, as we've grown uh, internationally, we've also taken that 110-year legacy, conservation legacy, with us. Uh, our partnership with the Chinese State Forest Administration that Dave mentioned is a good example. And some of you may not know, but or probably all of you know that China is fiber, uh, has a fiber deficit, but you probably may not know that of all the commodities that China imports, and they import a lot, fiber in the form of pulp, logs, and chips is the th number three, after, only after oil and iron ore. Dave talked about the partnership we have with the State Forest Administration in China, and this year we hope to begin a demonstration project on one of seven sites that the SFA has identified where we've been working on a, a best management practice program. And our work in China, we believe, is a, a great example of how we can su support and share best practices to create sustainability efforts uh, you know, all around the world. In other parts of the world, our efforts range from supporting environmental education projects in Brazil, one called Guardians of the Biosphere, that reaches about 8 million students. Uh, and we've also been very active in supporting the development and implementation of a new Russian forestry code. So with that overview, let me just turn to our, our conservation efforts, uh, or that overview of our conservation efforts, let me talk about sustainability for a minute. When you look at sustainability from the perspective of our industry, we have a great story to tell. Uh, we just haven't told it very well, uh, and we're working on that. Our major resource, the tree, is one of the world's most renewable resources and could be the biggest absorber of carbon on the planet. Our manufacturing facilities are both big producers 
of energy and also consumers of renewable energy. Uh, within, uh, within IP, for example, more than 73% of all the power we use in the United States comes from renewable carbon neutral biomass. We're also using more recovered fiber in our paper production process. And finally, our end products are recyclable and with some of the highest recovery rates in manufacturing today. While these are all important factors in terms of sustainability, when you look at it from a consumer perspective, what comes to people's minds more often than not is how much recycled paper we're using. And for the most part, that's a very good thing, and our industry is committed to recovering and recycling. Uh, the AFPA, which I have the privilege of working with Donna and chairing this year, has set a goal of increasing paper recovery rates to 60% by the year 2012. However, just focusing on recycling, I think consumers often miss the bigger picture. As long as the world needs wood and paper products, we'll continue to need wood fiber from our forests. And I can tell you, international paper in our industry, big and small companies, we're committed to sustainable and renewable forestry practices that embody continuous improvement. Uh, as a paper consumer, if we want sustainable forestry, we must focus on how we're getting the fiber and whether the fiber is certified by one of the major forestry certification standards, because that provides the transparency and the continuous improvement standards around renewability and sustainability. These certification efforts also ensure that forest management practices are protecting air, water, biodiversity, and wildlife habit, habitat, while at the same time, they're providing the fiber we need for our businesses and for our consumers. Certified forestry also provides jobs and incomes for communities while preserving the carbon absorbing capacity of the forest. With all the benefits certification brings, you think it would be common and everybody would be doing it. Uh, that's not the case. Less than 10%. Less than 10% of the world's forests and just under 13% of the U.S. forest lands are third-party certified. You know, now, we're all aware of the, of the various challenges that we heard, just heard about uh, in the world caused by illegal logging, uh, land conversion, and a general lack of sustainable forestry practices. Uh, that's why we at International Paper and uh, you know, our industry association are working to improve and expand the use of third-party certification of forest lands. It's very much a priority for international paper, even though we don't own any land to speak of in North America any longer. Uh, for our part, we support credible third-party certification and mutual recognition of forest certification standards. Um, and there are a number of them. Uh, globally, all of our paper mills are chain of custody certified to one or more of the four major certification programs around the world. I won't mention all of them, but in Russia, uh, with our new joint venture, uh, we operate four mills, two in Siberia, and each mill is chain of custody certified to the FSC standard. Uh, our adherence to that program, uh, we believe, sets a high standard, you know, sets the bar for other Russian companies to follow. And in Brazil, all of our fiber is supplied from our own eucalyptus plantations located outside the rainforest region and certified to the PEFC standard. So I think it ought to be clear, I hope it's clear, that. We support and believe in multiple certification programs and believe that competition has, imp has improved the standards, has provided more options for uh, customers and consumers obtaining uh, certified products, and has also helped cut costs down. Uh, we believe each of these programs uh, has strengths and advantages depending upon the land ownership practices of any given region. So it's not necessarily one size fits all. Uh, for us, the issue is, is not arguing over which certification program is better, and for some of you who are familiar with this, there's been a lot of arguing over which one is better. Uh, we think encouraging uh, mutual recognition of credible third-party certifi certi certifiers is the way to go.